Hey, this is Pastor Lafayette. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, we're in Psalm chapter 27. And um, we're going to finish today. So let's, uh, let's get to it. We're going to start in verse 10. We touched this yesterday, but we're going to finish up here for four verses, five verses. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now we start this off with, uh, we touched this yesterday, how, how God is, or desires to be our Father. Um, you know, he is God the creator to everyone on this globe. Uh, but he's not God the Father to everyone on the globe. Jesus actually made that very clear that uh, when he was speaking to the Jewish people themselves, people who had been chosen by God, when he spoke to them and said, uh, God is not your father. Your father is the devil. If you were of your father, you'd listen to my words. But since you're not and you're opposing me, your father is the devil. So Jesus made it very clear, just because you're born on the earth doesn't mean you have a father that's God. But if you've committed your life to him, if you've turned your life over to him, if you've, uh, if you've uh, repented and get given, placed your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior, if there is a bearing of witness in your spirit, and you know that you know that you know that you have been changed, that he's turned you, turned your life around, given you a new lease on life, then you know that that part of your spirit also cries out and calls God, not just simply your God, but your Father. Now, if he's your Father, he wants to lead you. He wants to teach you. Verse 12, he wants, <coughs> excuse me, uh, David is praying, Lord, don't deliver me to the will of my adversaries. He says, false witnesses have, have risen against me. Your Father wants to do that. He wants to help you. He wants to bless you. Verse 13 is actually very crucial today. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now, this is where some people really get confused. We will sometimes, it's like we've changed our mentality. Um, we think, well, one day when, when he comes back and he comes to take me away, or one day when I die and go to heaven, I'll be healed, and or I'll have peace, or I'll have joy, or I won't have sorrow, or I won't be so troubled, or I, you know, we go through this whole thing. David is speaking something very clear. He said, I believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, not in the land of the afterlife, not in the land of the resurrection life, <clears throat> the life that happens when, you know, after I've died. He says, I believe that I'm going to see the goodness of God today in this life. Um, we need to believe that God, I mean, that our covenant with God, and he's a covenant-making God, our covenant with God is not just when you die one day, and oh, finally then you'll have riches, or then you'll be prosperous in your heart, your soul, your life, and then finally you'll have, no, 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 no. In the land of the living, before I die, I believe the Lord wants to fulfill his covenant to us and see us lead a prosperous life, to see us lead, lead a life, um, not saying that there'll never be trials, but a life of victory, a life of overcoming, a life where, we're, where we finish on the top. He never designed us to be on the bottom, a life where we're the head and not the tail. A life where our, our crops are prospering, if you, you know, uh, our pantries are, are, are bountiful, 
where God takes care of the things that we have and, and makes them last longer than a lot longer than normal, we will see the goodness of the Lord now. We'll see his goodness now in the land of the living. David finishes with this line, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now, it's interesting that he says, Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Have courage when you do it. If you do those things, if you'll wait, and if you'll hold true, and if you'll stand in faith, he will show up and strengthen your heart. So wait on the Lord. Don't give up. Don't throw it all away. Don't stop before you've seen him prove himself to you. He's done it before. He'll do it again. Wait on the Lord. Thanks for joining me today. God bless you. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.